Hello there. What we are looking at today is uh, SQL arrays, functions and procedures as part of OCR J276 GCSE Computer Science. In specific, we are going to be looking at data storage inside of SQL using one and two dimensional arrays and also having a look at the differences and usages of functions and procedures. So there's the learning outcomes for what we're looking at today so we can get the pitch of what we are doing. So let's get started by looking at some SQL. So inside here we have got um, an SQL database. We've got this tape thing here which is referred to as a table and we are just going to call it for now table. You'll see how we're going to use this name in a second. Um, but we could be calling it profile, we could be calling it users, we could be calling it address information. What SQL is, which stands for structured query language, structured query language, um, it is a way of retrieving and finding information from something like this from a database. And there's different statements that you need to be aware of, and we're going to look at some of them now. So we want to find some information. So we're going to write something which is called a select statement. So with the select statement that can be used for finding particular pieces of information you can be as specific as you want. So if we went for select first name from table what that would do is it would show me all the information in the first name column for everybody on the table. So what that means is we can see everybody's names, uh, everyone's first names, but that's it. Or what we could write is select first name, comma, email, comma, city, from table. And then that would give us the first name, the email address, and the city from the table. So what that means is we can take multiple pieces of information that we need. So we're avoiding data duplication. Data duplication is bad. Um, and what that allows us to do is then be more specific with what we want to be looking at. Imagine, though, I want to be a little bit more specific with what I'm looking at and what the information is. Imagine I only want to find the people who get live in New York. So I only want to be looking at these people here. So what I'm going to write is select first name, comma, email, from table, where state equals n y. So what we can see from here is we are selecting the first name, selecting the email address from the table where the state here is equal to n y. So that means we're not worrying about this piece of information here, we're not worrying about these two pieces of information here. All we're focusing is on where the states are equal to n y. And what that means allows us to do is we can control our information a lot better. We've got, for example, here as well, um, in the phone field, two people with a phone number. So again, we can go for select first name from table where uh, phone is not null because what is not, not null means is that it's not an empty piece of information it's not something which is blank one other thing that we can do with SQL which is quite handy is we can do select star from table and that what this means is we're gonna get absolutely everything from the table every single piece of information, although we've got this little bit of information here, not in the circle, we're getting all the information that's in the table. We can even be a bit more specific on there. We can select, if I could write, that'd be amazing. Select star from table where state is not equal to NY. So then that is only going to return this row here, this row here, this row here. 
So we can use SQL to find specific pieces of information really quickly, really easily. So what I want you to do is show your knowledge of SQL, what it's used for, how it can be used to retrieve information, and have a quick look at the SQL statements we've mentioned previously. Give the video a quick pause, and then we'll move on. So what we're going to look at now is arrays. Arrays are, sorry, are arrays, bad grammar there from me. Um, arrays are used for storing information, storing information in lists. So we can see here, we've got this example of an array. We've got six elements here. Arrays, more often than not, start off with the first number being zero because that is the true, first true number. So we can see here, we have got an array of six elements. They've all got integers in here and it's got six pieces of information in here. With arrays, you can find them, you can search to them, you can add to them, you can append to them. They're really, really useful for data storage. So here, we've got a nice little list, um, and that's all that's in the array. This is good because then if we're gonna search, for example, the number three, we could then search for the number three. If we wanted to append something onto the end, we could do that quite nice, nice and happily, and then that would become a 1D array with seven elements in. Nice, easy, quick to find data, search for data, and you can do loads of different funky stuff with them. If we look at two-dimensional arrays, originally with a one-dimensional array, we were just looking at with a single list, whereas with a two-dimensional array, we've got columns and rows. So now we can create little tables of information using lists. So here we've got this array again. We can see, like the previous one, is being declared as an integer, so it's only going to accept whole numbers. And we can see that we're going to be getting three rows, four columns. And again, as we saw in the previous example, the first value here, number one, is in location 0, 0. If we're going to be looking at location 2, 1, that would give us 7 because we're going to go to 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, takes us to 7 there. So two-dimensional arrays can be used really quickly and easily. If you're going to be creating like a board game or a game of chess, you'd probably want to use a two-dimensional array to store the positions of different pieces and different moves. So all I want you to do now, talk about arrays, what they can be used, how data can be accessed, and the differences between one-dimensional and two-dimensional arrays. Give the video a quick pause, and then we'll move on. So finally, we are going to be looking um, at the, just the differences between functions and procedures. You'll see functions and procedures in code that you write, in code other people write, and they are very, very useful. By using a function, it means you can write a piece of code which can then be called multiple times and be used multiple times. It's the same thing with a procedure. So straight away, it's saving time for the developer, and then also it means by using functions, their code is more maintainable because you can see where things work in a particular function rather than having to read the same lines of code over and over again. A procedure performs a task. So if there's got a job to do, that's going to be up to the procedure, whereas a function produces information. A function can return information as well. So you might uh, have some code which needs to work something out and then to give you an output at the end. That would be a function. Procedures just perform some form of task for you. You can pass parameters into functions and procedures. So if you've got a variable called Bob, you could pass that variable Bob into a function or a procedure, and then those uh, functions and procedures can use those. You need to make sure that we're thinking about scope when we're looking at functions and procedures. We've got local scope, we've got global scope. If you create a variable inside a function or a procedure, it's going to be local to that function, that procedure, so it can only be used in there. If we're thinking about a function that's going to return information, you need to make sure that you're defining it as a global variable, which means that they can be used anywhere inside a function, outside of a function, and can be um, modified if needed inside a function or outside a function, whereas parameters only performs a particular task, doesn't return anything. So last thing to do today, share your knowledge of functions and procedures, what they're used for, and what the difference is between them. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and I'll see you in another video. See you later.